Oh my gosh. Yep. I love starting the day off with you. <laughs> These hilarious ways. Liz's computer is like loading, loading, loading. Like, crashing, crashing. Oh gosh. I really hope it's not crashing. Good morning, <sighs> like, everyone. Good morning. Second, we think that uh, we've got all the technology figured out <laughs> and that it's just conspires against you yeah it's yeah hilarious. so that i love my hilarious. phone this morning good morning everyone <laughs> yay yeah happy wednesday we're so so glad that you're here we're super excited to be back for part two of this exciting discussion so my name is bonnie schmidt if this is your first time being here so so happy to see you absolutely and i'm liz joy moore and this is part two to something we started last week which it's okay if you missed you yep. can't go back and see it in our group feed or see it on our YouTube channel if you'd like yeah. we'll a quick recap as well, and then we'll kind of move on. But yeah. Yeah. That was so fun. Well, was, okay. I wouldn't say it was fun last week with all the on and offs, but today we should be good. Facebook fish, fixed this um, stream yard issue, but, um, but it was awesome actually to have so many of you over on our YouTube channel. So if you haven't navigated your way over there, um, and you'd like to, we have, you know, many of our lives that have been streamed and saved over there that you can access at any time as well. And yeah, just hit like and subscribe and share with your friends if you have any friends that you think might uh, yeah, benefit from the content that we're teaching. We're, we're excited to just hear how it's been landing for many of you. So thanks for sharing your thoughts. Always, always. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So Last week, and again, we'll just do kind of a, a quick um, nutshell recap, but we've been talking about emotional patterns. And I just thought, you know, gosh, that this information would be really helpful because we talked about how when we are feeling a certain emotion like depression or sadness or joy or whatever it might be that we're feeling, that there's actually a pattern that exists within our bodies that we experience every time that emotion comes up for us, right? So uh, what we did was we did a little experiential thing and we've been loving doing that. So um, grab a pen and paper today uh, so you can take notes and um, write some stuff down as we work through. But we really asked people to say, okay, so just consider anxiety for your body or depression, whatever emotion um, anyone chose. And then the three parts that really make up the emotional pattern are the physical. So we ask people to really discern uh, how it felt in the body when that emotion showed up. So like where in the body were you feeling it? How is it presenting itself? Like how was your body language? Where were your eyes? Where, how were your shoulders? Like getting really into the nitty gritty details, right? Um, and so that was the first thing. And the second thing is, okay, so when you're in that emotional state, I chose anxiety. When you're in that emotional state, where are your thoughts, right? Uh, where is your attention is the next one. Where is your focus, right? So what are you focusing on when you're in that state of anxiety, depression, joy, peace, whatever it is. And then the third thing is semantics. So what are the things that you're telling yourself? What words are coming through your frame of reference when you are in that moment of anxiety, right? And so we made a, a big long list of an emotion that is difficult for us. And we did that one first. And then we moved and did an emotion that we'd like to experience more of because the power behind this is when you know what the emotional patterning is in your body, you can learn to work and disrupt it once you are aware of the emotional yeah. pattern. Yeah. But the first step is always that awareness piece, which is why we went through and it's super worth visiting. And we know we can learn all kinds of things, you know, about our bodies, our attention, our emotion, our anxieties. But unless we take a little bit of action, which is a huge part of why Bonnie and I like to make, make as much of this content experiential, right? For you to follow alongside, engage in the questions, writing down kind yeah. of what you experience, right? Uh, if we, it's one thing to take this information in, it's another thing to take action on it and to begin to notice and become aware, right? And that's that mindful piece. Um, and it's much easier to become mindful of it when we actually think through how these things show up. So that's yeah. why last week, as Bonnie mentioned, we went through those, we had you really write out, you know, how do those, each of those emotions that you chose show up, right? Literally write, 
write out how does it show up in my physical body? How does it show up in my attention? How does it, sh how do my semantics, how are they uh, affected or how are they, how, what are, what are those, what do those sound and look like when I'm going through this emotion? Um, yeah. and so now we're going to use that information to begin to learn how it, it, what's the best way to disrupt this pattern, right? To right. Know, and then disrupt it. Yeah. Yeah. So good morning to everyone hopping on. We're so excited to see that you're here. I see Kathy's on and Kirsty and Denise and Nikki. Um, there's a couple more other hellos, but I just see Facebook user. Yeah. Liz, if you, um, Oh, good. Okay. The sound is okay. Someone had commented, you sound far away, Liz. So if, if I'm not sure if you saw or heard, but um, yeah, you. Liz had to hop on on her phone today because her computer is in the process of, woo. Oh, she's upside down. Am I still upside down? No, you're, you're right side up. Yeah. <laughs> she's, Liz is doing all kinds of tricks today. <laughs> she's a Jane of all trades, right? So Behind good. me, my computer's still loading. So. Ugh. Why oh, on my gosh. phone? <laughs> For some reason, it decided to load ten minutes before our live. Yeah, so load crazy. what? I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> A bunch of oh. free things that I love. I'm sure. Oh, so um, good. Yeah. So again, once we become more aware of what these emotional patterns are within our bodies, then we can really mindfully break the pattern, which is what we are going to work on talking about and experiencing a bit today. Yeah. So, so glad that, so glad that you're here for that. And again, you can go back and watch that first part from last week if you missed it. So, so the most important thing that we can do when we are looking at breaking emotional pattern comes first with changing that physical state. Right. And, uh, you know, if you're, I mean, we all know like how these different emotions really manifest within our bodies and how we feel when they come up. And we really used our discernment to just dial into that uh, last week. And so if you start to feel something like this come up, <clears throat> actually prior to knowing all of this information, it's really interesting because when I have anxiety come up, the first thing that I feel like I need to do that that will help me is move. Even if I'm in bed, even just rolling over onto my side, totally shifts things for me. I know that that sounds crazy, but I, that's something that I would do even if I was like just lying in bed and sleeping and like starting to feel really anxious. I'm like, okay, like it's cool. I'm just going to move. And I would just, you know, roll over onto my side that kind of thing. Um, yeah. You know, I, I mean, that goes, you know, I, I think back, I, I, I went live, I think last week or two weeks ago and asked that question, like, what's the, everyone's like number one thing that's really helped them with their anxiety? And yeah, yeah. Commented that it was something physical, right? Like, I remember hearing, you know, reading someone write weeding. <laughs> um, yes, it's so good. But a lot of movement, a lot of breath work, which is movement. Um, but a lot of people commented with some kind of physical association. And I noticed that I went back and looked at that those comments after, you know, reviewing this content together. So good. Yeah. yeah. So just doing something to do something completely different with your body than, than what is your pattern for that emotion. Right. So for me, anxiety definitely can feel like, ah, you know, a little bit um, frozen. Right. So I have to have that awareness so that I can do something like, you know, just stand up straight, get in your power stance. Um, did a little presentation about power stance yesterday, but it's, it's true when we, when we're, um, have kind of a curled in posture if we're feeling which often is associated with like feeling depressed or anxious or sad or lonely or whatever we're so curled in on ourselves and we've talked about this with the ease keys before but what that does is it depresses all of your organs right and when all of our organs are depressed uh then it sends signals to the brain of depression right so even just putting your shoulders putting your shoulders up and back rolling them up and back tilting your head just a little bit upwards so that you're looking out at the horizon is super, super helpful. I call it like the power stance, grounding down in your feet. So if I'm like out at the grocery store or something and I'm starting to feel anxious, which has happened to me a million times, I get into my like power stance because <laughs> I'll notice what my posture is doing and it completely breaks that um, cycle for me. So of course now I know more of the um, 
more of the science behind it, but go for a walk, um, go do yoga, go outside, uh, turn on your most favorite song ever and just sing your lungs out, you know, um, whatever it is, but just do something completely different than what your, what that emotional pattern is, uh, or how that emotional pattern is really physically manifesting within yourself. Yeah. And here's a perfect example of, you know, if you think about your body curling in, think about what you're doing to your lungs, like your your ability to breathe. Right? Yeah. And so yep. we talk about uh, no longer is it just like, you know, seems voodoo-ish to say to <laughs> the mind-body connection. We know from, I think we've mentioned Candace Pert, who is a doctor that really made this become, uh, really noticed a lot of the science behind the mind and the body in the 70s and made that more of a, you know, but it's taken some time to become more and more mainstream and still is, but we know that this is, there's a science behind this mind body connection. Right? Yeah. So as you're doing, there's a reason you're doing this and then you're also physically affecting your body. Right. And so if you can't like get your mind out of the state, right, which is very difficult to do in any emotional state, but specifically we know within, anxiety, yeah. right to change the physical association, the mind's then going to follow. Yeah. So that's why breaking this physical association is so important, right? But if you can, as Bonnie was mentioning, like rolling the shoulders back and looking up, what, do you, what you're allowing yourself to do is more oxygen to get into the body, right? So your, your ability to breathe, capacity to breathe opens up. And you'll notice a lot of tools and strategies like with the polyvagal that uh, Bonnie mentioned with the ease keys. And if there's words we're saying, you don't know, but okay, we have a lot of, you know, lives on this stuff. And again, like go right to our YouTube channel and you'll see titles around this stuff. But mm -hmm. um, that's why a lot of them will connect these two, right? This mind body and, and focus on stimulating the body to send those signals back to the brain. Yeah, it's so true. And you brought up such a good point, Liz, that so much of therapy still, right? Even with this knowledge of of how important the body is, right? It still starts up here, right? Like so much therapy is still very mind-based, right? And you can't get at the heart of what's going on without also integrating the body. Um, and so that's why, yeah, it's such, just such powerful. It's so powerful. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's so, yeah. specifically mm -hmm. why, you know, Bonnie and I as coaches, we study what we have, right? So like, we were studying this, you know, no longer. And it's so great. Is it just like, okay, just the science and then just this, and then just, and it's like this dichotomy. Mm -hmm. Now they're coming together, right? Yeah. Like, um, my studies of mindfulness-based cognitive therapy, that's really, even though the word is mindful, right? Like mindfulness is really about getting in the body. Right? Yeah. And, and you combine that with cognitive therapy. What does cognition relate to the brain, right? So now we're pulling together those aspects that were once seen as so separate, uh, but they work so beautifully together, right? And yeah. it might be already in your like awareness, like, oh yeah, that makes sense, right? But the more and more, like, and here's that thought-based approach, the more and more you understand, oh, this is so connected, the more you then have the like, the choice and ability to make those actions, right? In your body or mm -hmm. your brain that, that then will send messages to the other side of your body. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and in the other direction. Right. So, yeah. 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 Such a good, such a good explanation, Liz. So let's yeah. Do more fun. Let's do it. Okay. Sounds good. Do you okay. Want hang on. I'm just sorry. Sorry. No, I was just looking at comments. <laughs> I yeah, back over. So, okay. Nikki, I think this might be you. Um, but it says Facebook user on my end. So, if it's someone else, my apologies. But um, let's see. So, yeah. If you do something physical, it, distracts your brain and stops you from thinking about your fear. Absolutely. Yeah. The worst thing I can do is lay down and hide in bed because it makes me think, <laughs> yeah, hamster wheel of negativity. Yes. Right. I think we've all been on that wheel. Oh my goodness. You know, someone that I, um, my friend Maka that I interviewed, and actually this is on the podcast, this interview, she talks about how like, and I love this just description, the, um, thoughts kind of being like the conveyor belt at the airport right and that like with all the suitcases that are going around and she's like you really get to kind of choose which suitcase <laughs> you don't really in real life at the airport right get to choose whatever suitcase looks nice to you <laughs> you're I like oh yeah i love that one yeah. um I but i just love that thing you know that idea around it of like okay like we get to pick and choose so that's good um 
Yeah. Oh, good, Nikki. Okay, great. And then are you using a different part of your brain if you distract yourself by doing something different? Absolutely. And it's activating and highlighting different different parts of your brain. Ooh, Liz and I were sort of, well, Liz is just getting started. We're collectively starting to read this book called Breath. I think we mentioned it last week. It's so good, but it's, it's just, um, I, I mentioned that because even just breathing through different nostrils helps activate either your sympathetic part of your nervous system or your parasympathetic part of your nervous system. So you're like kind of fight or flight system that ramps up or your calming part of the system. So sometimes it's just a really simple shift that can activate a completely different part of your nervous system, right? Which highlights different parts of your brain. So yeah, so yeah. cool. All right. And it's, you'll, you know, you, you may have, if you've done some yoga, you've probably heard of alternate nostril breathing or maybe even yeah. some. Um, yeah. But it, it's like, you know, not necessarily in yoga class are you going to get though, here's what we're going to do and why. Right. It's just going to mm -hmm. be, okay, now we're going to do this. <laughs> Unless you right. put time and effort in to learn, right, which is what you're doing right now, you don't realize, oh, this is what I'm stimulating and this is what I'm, and I can, begin to notice the feeling or the change in my body and therefore I can use this as a tool when dot 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 right yeah yeah so I think that's what that's something that we just love is that the ability to connect these tools to that why right yeah it's true and one quick quick important thing before we move on yeah yeah um it's just talking a little bit about co-care because sometimes and I know that this was really um very true for me, you know, I have always been a really high functioning, anxious person, right? And so like, on the outside, I was able to still maintain doing all the things, you know, and typically, no one would really know that I had anything going on, which actually was really difficult, right? Um, because it felt super isolating and super lonely, right? So if you're in that position where you're feeling like, okay, like, I, I, can still function, you know, and I'm still working and I'm still taking care of my family, but I'm like really struggling on this on the inside, you know, co-care. And it's something that we've talked about, um, you know, a, a few times, but co-care is really important because sometimes we have a hard time regulating on our own, right? Um, it's why like humans are built for connection and we're built to lift each other up and support each other. So um, let someone in, right? Like a partner, a friend, a therapist, a coach, you know, um, uh, reach out in this group, right? Because you really are so not alone, <laughs> right? And so um, just that idea of co-care and, you know, even just telling someone like, hey, I need a hug right now. You don't need to, if you don't want to, of course, like never divulge all the things that are going on with you unless you want to. But even just as simple, like, hey, I could like just really use a hug right now, you know, or whatever it might be. Then that regulation from the other person, um, this is a great place to practice heart math in and with someone, right? Um, or if you have a friend who you know really struggles and you practice heart math around them, that helps to bring their heart brain connection back into coherence. So co care is just a really important uh, way that we humans, you know, uh, can stay connected and we need each other, right? Like we are never meant to be so individualistic, right? And our societies just like kind of have that ingrained into us. Like if you can't do it on your own, you are failing and that's just wrong. <laughs> no, it's very, it's very yeah. difficult to do on your own. And that's why one of the strategies in our longer program has, it has village and has yeah. everyone, right? There's, there's aspects and reasons why it's so important. And we do yeah. know that a lot of high functioning since we are that, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we'll try to do it and go it alone, right? And those that I, you know, those that I know that have connected and been interactive in this group have, I know, really appreciated it. Not that that's the only way to connect, right? There's right. different ways to connect and different things that work for different people. Yeah. But thanks for mentioning that, Bones. It's super important. Yeah. 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 So let's right. do an experiential activity. Um, <laughs> so favorite. good. If you haven't learned about me yet, that's where I come from, the experiential education realm. Um, so we're going to do an experiential activity uh, around this now, around, around this emotional pattern that I was kept holding up while Bonnie was talking of these three things. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So bear with us because it's going to be hilarious. <laughs> I feel like we need some music. I know. Right? right? Yeah. Bonnie, get your, you know, beatboxing going on. 
It's <laughs> not good. I should get Reed down here. My son, he's like a, he's, yeah, he's really oh, good. Right. Yeah. He's so constantly when, making when sounds. Going, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, so man, true. So great. All right. Okay. I actually found the notes. So my you got computer's it. You're working. So I'm going to. Oh, yay. <laughs> oh, gosh, Liz. Oh, my goodness. Yep. All the things today. Yep. Yeah. All right. We're going to do it. So let's do it. So, okay. So bring your arms out to the side. And this is going to be like maybe. <laughs> like, can't see your arms out to the side, but they are. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to make sure you can still hear me because of my, my mic. Yeah. On, but. All right, and all we're gonna do is just raise your head a little bit, put your hands like you're raising the roof, like you might even know this is a dance move. Yeah. And we're just gonna <laughs> pump our arms in the air up, and it's gonna look awesome. Just pump them up. Oh pump yeah. Them up, pump, <laughs> pump, pump them up. Pump them arms. Pump. Them up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go, Liz. Hey, that was good. That was way better than mine. <laughs> so good. If you pump it up, you might feel some blood flow in or. Yep, I can already feel just like, yeah, yeah it's a good little workout. What this is doing physically to us is actually this is stretching our diaphragm. You can stand or sit. Yeah. That's Sorry. Right. Yeah. We're trying to stay within our camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually makes you breathe differently. So we, if you notice your breath change, there's a reason for that. You are physically changing your breath because we are, we're stretching the diaphragm. All right. Yeah. All right. So Five, four, three, two. One. <laughs> yeah. Shake it out. Shake it out. Shake it out. So again, like you might not do that in the grocery store. Maybe you would. Maybe you could just put on some some you tunes or whatever. That. It totally might be something that I would do in the grocery store, dance down the aisles, right? But um, again, just a really good way to shift, just shift what you're doing, um, and that it can be something as simple as that to just completely break physical state. So. If you don't have an opportunity to go for a walk or a run or a bike ride or do yoga in that moment, like just pumping your arms can be saying that pump, pump, pump it up. Yeah, you can just I mean, remember Liz you know. and I being ridiculous to pumping our arms and maybe just that enough will do it. <laughs> and you'll laugh and then you'll be like, yeah, okay, I'm going to be good. Yeah, so just take a moment yeah. to, you know, maybe you noticed it during or maybe you notice it now, but just take a moment to notice how you feel post pumping the arms, like what changed for you when you were doing it or where you are now, right? Mm -hmm. And you can just note that to yourself. You can write it down or you can pop it in the chat to us, right? Um, and now I have a question for you, right? I want you to take a look around your space within arm's distance, whether you're sitting or standing, okay? And I want you to just choose an item that's your favorite item within arm's distance from you oh man oh yeah it doesn't have to be like the most favorite item of your life right but just within arm's distance what you might <laughs> i'm gonna choose well i can't lift it but it's this plant next to me <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> i'm like which oh, I can show us oh yeah wait i can't remember oh, there yeah yeah there it is oh it's so pretty yeah so i won't lift him up but i can definitely pet him <laughs> mm -hmm. Mine's my singing bowl for sure. Love this, love this thing. Yeah, can that you was... sound again? Oh yeah, here. Let's see if I don't know how it'll sound from your end if it's really nice. tinny. I like that. How have I not heard that before? Hey, so good. Yeah. Cool. And so, all right. So we pumped our arms, right? I, uh, I asked you, what's your favorite item within arm's distance from you? You can either share it, send a picture to us in the chat, or just write what it is up to you. Picture of my kids, my cast iron cauldron, yes. Right. Bedroom is surrounded by pics of my kids. Oh, so good. Right. Awesome. I can't see the chat, so you're going to have to, like, just, you know, share. Yeah, it. I'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah, cool. All right. So what did we just do? I have the diagram up, right? What's the very first thing we chose to do? Other than look awesome. <laughs> was we disrupted, we disrupted the physical association, right? And what's interesting about disrupting the physical association, it automatically then disrupts your attention, right? It changes your attention. So I don't know if it was Nikki or someone says you're distracted, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's the disruption, right? We can only hold one thought in our mind at a time. 
right? When you disrupt this, my pen's like running out here. Oh, okay, it's working. When you disrupt this, right, it automatically changes this. So the, that one thought that's in your head automatically changes. Yeah. All right. And then like the, the next thing that, you know, this is really like working with someone else or working with yourself, you have to then ask a question and ask a question that then changes your semantics or language, but it's particularly a question that's something light or positive or fun, right? Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. when I asked you, like, what's something that you like within arm's distance, right? Very yeah. simple question. This one might be harder to do on your own, but here's what we're going to ask you to do today, All right? Think about whether it's the item you just chose, right? So now you notice these three are all then disruptive, which then changes our emotional, or disrupts our emotional pattern, right? Think about something in your space, in your home. It doesn't have to be the item you just chose, right? But you probably do, right? Like my plants are definitely one of my go <laughs> twos, but I have like my favorite mug, there's, and Bonnie, you can share some of yours, you know, choose one thing that if you were to notice any of your emotional patterns going on and you were like, oh, you know, I could go get curious or take a look at my leaves are changing all the time. I had no idea actually until this last year when I became a little more mindful in my plant watering. Bonnie knows what month I spent doing that. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I would good. Like spend time with each plant as I, I do a different mindful thing every month if, if that might be new information to folks. And so I spent actually over a month because I loved it so much, um, just spending time with each plant. And I was noticing how they were changing and how the color of the leaves, I didn't even notice the texture or the lines within a leaf that, and you know, and I was like, whoa, I didn't realize this one was this much bigger, you know? Mm -hmm. So when something I just did mindlessly before, just, you know, watering the plants so that they survive, I was now like having a relationship with, and I kind of like, like fell in love with some of my plants and just like the details that I would go in secret and be like, you're my favorite, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> so but, good. So just choose something in your home that you know you could visit or just feel or touch, especially for anxious fo folks, using your sense of touch is very helpful, right? So that if you catch yourself in this emotional pattern, you can do the pumping, right? You know it's going to change your attention and then visit something that feels really light or positive or fun, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so of course, within your space. You could always carry something with you, you know, in your car. I have a little stone that my niece gave me that says Joy, which is my middle name, Aww. that I carry around with me. And so I can just, Aww. it's in my purse and I can kind of just rub it sometimes. Yeah. So that will bring me back to, like, represent her love and our love. So, um, so good. I don't know. What about for you, Bonds? What works for yeah. you? Well, yeah, I was just thinking about how, like, for for my experience of that. So when I was pumping my arms, like, you know, again, I wasn't I wasn't in a deep state of anxiety, but like my attention was not on how I was feeling. <laughs> my attention was on like this, right? Like what I was doing, and so I can really see how it would shift and change then. Uh, my attention and the question really helped me to be like, oh, okay, yeah, what am I? It's like, you know, squirrels with a shiny object. Like, what's the shiny object that you can put into your frame of reference to just get your attention and focus thinking somewhere differently? And one thing that I thought might be kind of helpful, that might be kind of a cool thing is, um, you know, like, write yourself, you know, a list of questions or something, right? That are just random. Like, hey, think about your favorite this, or like just even a list of like things that bring you joy. And even if you're like, again, out at the grocery store, whatever, you can always just keep that list tucked into your purse and just pull it out and be like, oh yeah, my, my children or my this or that, because it's a, it's a physical anchor to help you move through a state. Right. And sometimes when we're we're left with our own like brains. We're like, oh gosh, I know there's all these things that bring me joy, but what are they? You know, in the in the heat of the moment, right? So if you just even write it down, right? Or again, like what you said, I love that was about having just like a, you know, a, a lot of people call them like worry stones, you know, um, or there's little worry dolls that you just tuck in your pocket, and if you're having that moment, it's like, oh, it reminds me of like, okay, here's this touchstone, or. Um, you know, just just has your attention and focus going somewhere completely differently. And then, you know, again, for me, like once I if I were to think about um, my kids, for instance, right, like that's one of my biggest ones, because I just get so like, you know, because I just love them so much. 
then it really does start changing again, like the the language that I'm telling myself, right? So they always pop into my head and like, oh, I'm just like, you know, love them, love them, love them. And I go to love, 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 love <laughs> as my semantics as opposed to, um, you know, like, oh gosh, this is, why is this happening to me again? You know, why are you here anxiety? Um, right. Yeah, so I, that's just kind of how like it, it felt in my body to do those different things. Um, right. So yeah, curious to curious to know how it landed, um, yeah. how it landed for you. Yeah, so it's so good. And again, so. just bringing it back to you know all these learnings and why I think it's Bonnie and I feel it's so important to to know these and share these right. Yeah. Other anxious souls, right? Is it's because you all have shared, many of you have shared, and we've shared what physical things helped help our anxiety. Well, now, like you see a little bit of the science that actually physical association is the first thing to disrupt. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Yeah. So I'm doing it. Now I know why. And I'll make sure I more I more often choose that or find the things that feel good for me. Right. So here's what yeah. you explore a little bit. If you're a writer, right, right. Kirsten, Kathy wrote pencil. That was her most treasured item in, in arm's reach. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I was like, that's so powerful. Yeah. Just yeah. writing. Yep. You know, yeah, and Kirsty um, with her poetry and yeah, Nikki with her poetry. Yeah. I'm I'm definitely a touch person, right? So I love like <laughs> I'm about to say sweet. touching my the leaves of my plants, you know. Um so find what what you know what aspect of, of something that is is for you. Like are, are you know, are you a writer? Are you like are you a visual person? Are you a you know sensory touch or more of a touch person? Yeah. And then choose some things that feel right for you. And that's that's where you get to be curious and explore a little bit. So good. I love it. Okay, let me see. I'm gonna hop back to the comments here. Okay, let's see. Uh this is Nikki. So can you see that, Liz, if I pull it onto the I can. Yeah, okay. So touching something is using your senses like yeah, like holding an ice cube. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. That's why um just to bring this up for a quick second. Um there's a method called the Wim Hof method. It's just W-I-M and then H-O-F. And um, it, I, I think to me, it really speaks particularly to men that struggle with anxiety, because as we know, like men are definitely not held in this emotional space in the same way, right? Um, which is so unfortunate and, um, and definitely is a part of like shifting this conversation around mental health, right? Um, because men struggle with anxiety also, but they are just so, they're even more isolated, right? Because, you know, men are supposed to be like the tough, strong, brave, right? Cultural, like male, strong archetype, right? Is what we kind of hold up as stature of perfection in our culture, right? And so the Wim Hof method is all about, um, different breathing practices, but also cold water immersion is a huge part of the Wim Hof method. Um, and so I had a, a dear friend, I had kind of reached out on um, Facebook and just asked like, hey, I'm just curious from my guy friends, like, do any of you experience anxiety? And like, what do you do and what helps? And one of them reached out to me behind the scenes and said, hey, like I do this cold water immersion thing, whatever. And I was like, because he would post videos of him like in like frozen lakes, <laughs> you know, like just, and I was always curious. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Like you're, but that was why, right? And so um, super interesting. I just, um, so anyway, if you, if I, and you know, cold water immersion definitely helps like drain um, and move the lymphatic system through. So there's lots of really positive things for, um, you know, getting toxins out of your body. There's all kinds of different things, but if you have any men in your life that are, are struggling, that's a good method. So, and, and, and women too, it helps women too. I do, I do cold yeah. showers. Uh, yes. Every shower I add cold water. It also stimulates the vagus nerve and, oh, Bonnie, um, Mark Hyman on his podcast just did a whole podcast on how cold water immersion helps anxiety. So you can uh -huh, check, uh -huh. check the podcast out. Maybe we can pop it somewhere in, in our group feed. Um, awesome. Yeah. But, uh, so yeah. So there's a lot of science behind that. It's it's, it's awesome. And I, I mm -hmm. love cold water. I know you do polar dips too. So we both do. Yeah. It. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, totally. I am on board with the cold water immersion. Yeah, <laughs> conversation Bonnie and I had about like being you know a part of an old like when we're old older it would be like a part of an old woman crew that 
gets in water, cold water every day. So. Yeah, so good. Yeah, there's a really good book about that. I'll have to find out what that. It's like the Ladies Swimming Society or something. It's it was such a beautiful book. Yeah. Yep. Um, let's see. Kirsty, this was from Kirsty. Each person will find their own amulet. Hers is a necklace. Others have stones or crystals or key rings. Ooh, that's a good one. Trish says that, yeah, sensory smells. Yeah, so good. Touch oranges, lavender. Mm. Ooh, walking on different surfaces. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Ooh, cool. ooh I have, ooh, that might be in my next month. Ooh. So good. And Nikki said she's ordered a stress ball because her hands are stiff lately. Yeah. This ball is a therapy exercise ball. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Well, and that's, again, like something. I think that there's some things that we really can do, like just out in public, but whatever. No one's really even going to notice, you know? So, um, yeah. I, I know that I do things a little bit differently at home than I do when I'm like out in the world. So, it's good to have a whole bag of tricks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yay. Oh, for being here, everyone. Yes. And we're so, so excited to see you. Oh, oh. So here's here's a thing. Liz and I, maybe we mentioned this before, but we've both been called for jury duty. <laughs> and so um, next week, so I have two weeks and then Liz has the following week. Um, so that's kind of thrown a little bit of a wrench into our plans and um, a little bit of a wrench into, we had planned to do a workshop. And so anyway, we'll keep you posted on all that stuff. But next week, we are going to do our live on Tuesday, actually. Next two weeks, the next, now, the next two weeks, yes. Um, Tuesday at noon, my time. So that's going to be 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then uh, 8 p.m. if you're in the UK. Trish, it'll be 7 a.m. for you. Um, yeah, so we'll make sure that we post that in there. Our apologies. Like, life just keeps happening. Um, and yeah, jury duty, the way it works for, for us in Washington State is I, I have to call the evening before, and then I may or may not have jury duty for multiple days, and then I have to do the same thing the next week. And then um, Liz has a similar thing the following <laughs> the following week. What are the chances of getting both called for jury duty within the same three week span, Liz? Which is correct. But me. as usual, we will send out the event. So we'll let you all know. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Yeah. So good. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, bye, everyone.